During this presentation, we're going to talk about the updates made to Nearpod in the year 2020. And one of the reasons that we use and promote Nearpod within our district as one of our educational technology big three, alongside Canvas and Google Drive, is that Nearpod is a great tool for delivering explicit instruction, initiating feedback cycles with students, and maximizing student opportunities to respond, all components of our MTSS framework. So by learning about these Nearpod updates, we are going to better be able to facilitate student learning in engaging synchronous and asynchronous environments. Today's agenda includes discussion of updates that will enhance synchronous instruction, including the teacher view in student paste mode, live teacher view of draw out responses, Zoom integration, and the blank graph option in the Desmos graphing calculator tool. There are also some updates that will benefit asynchronous instruction, such as Flipgrid activities, interactive videos, time to climb, moderating student-paced collaboration boards, and audio submissions for open-ended questions. Some of the terminology we're going to be using quite a bit throughout this presentation uh, includes synchronous, which means together in real time, and synchronous instruction uh, can happen both in person and online. It just means that it's happening with everybody together all at the same time. Then we have asynchronous, and asynchronous instruction is student-paced, and it can also happen in person and online. So there are many ways to run a Nearpod lesson. We can make the Nearpod lesson live, where the teacher controls the pace of the Nearpod lesson, and all students are completing it at the same time. And then there's also student-paced Nearpod lessons, which means that the students are working through the questions and content at their own pace. Technically, a student-paced lesson is asynchronous in a sense that students are, again, moving at their own pace through the lesson. However, for this update, we're gonna talk about using a student-paced Nearpod synchronously meaning students will be going through the questions at their own pace, but we're gonna have all of our students working on that student paced Nearpod at the same time or synchronously. So historically, you could only see real-time student progress if you were running a live Nearpod lesson, which means you were the one as the teacher controlling students' movement through that content and those questions. But now, you can see student progress in real time in the student-paced mode. This is a great opportunity to initiate feedback cycles and make adjustment to your instruction on the fly because as students are working at their own pace in your classroom, you can be circulating, monitoring their progress on your device, and dropping in to help them when you see that they're having trouble. The next update that benefits synchronous instruction is the Draw It Live View. Again, historically in Nearpod, you couldn't see student Draw It submissions until they submitted, but now you can see student progress on a Draw It in real time. It's a little bit delayed, so this works best with longer Draw It activities, such as completing a graphic organizer, but it is a great opportunity to drop in and help students if you see them struggling as they're completing the Draw It activity. A third update to be used with synchronous instruction is the Zoom integration in Nearpod. You now have the option when launching a Nearpod lesson to launch a live Nearpod lesson with Zoom. What this does is it starts your Nearpod lesson and starts a Zoom all at the same time for you. And then when students use the Nearpod join code and join at join.nearpod.com, they are automatically entered into not only the Nearpod lesson, but also into your Zoom meeting. So you will have a Zoom meeting running while you are facilitating a live Nearpod lesson, and students only need to go to one place to join both. The last update we're going to discuss that benefits synchronous instruction is the Desmos blank graph. Historically, Desmos has a wide variety of pre-built graphs that students can use to explore math through graph manipulation. Now there's also the option for a blank graph, which allows students to start from scratch 
enter equations, and manipulate those graphs. Desmos is not an activity that requires submissions, so if you want to see how students have manipulated a graph or if they have represented an equation appropriately, etc., you can include a draw it activity. Students can take a screenshot in the Desmos activity, and then in the draw it activity, they can upload and submit that screenshot. The first update that I want to discuss that benefits asynchronous activity, asynchronous instruction is Flipgrid activities. Now in Nearpod, one of the activity options is to add a Flipgrid. You start by creating the Flipgrid in Flipgrid itself, but then can add it and embed it within your Nearpod lesson. This can be done for asynchronous instruction as well as for synchronous or live Nearpod lessons. However, if you're going to be having students contributing to Flipgrid during live Nearpod lessons in person, please be sure to plan for headphones. Another great tool for asynchronous instruction is interactive videos. If you're familiar with PlayPosit or Edpuzzle, Nearpod now has a similar tool. You can choose a pre-built Nearpod video or a video from YouTube or your own video, and insert questions. As students watch the video, it will pause as questions come up. They will need to answer the questions, and then they can continue. If you used the interactive video feature when it first came out, you didn't have the ability to trim videos, but you do now. These videos can also be used synchronously with a live Nearpod lesson. Uh, you have the option to play it as a standalone interactive video. You can embed it in the Nearpod lesson and you can play it in front of the whole class with no questions. You could play it in front of the whole class with the questions and then when the video pauses, that's your opportunity for classroom discussion. You can also, when these videos are embedded in a Nearpod lesson, you can watch the video at the front of the class and then students see the questions on their devices, or you can have each student individually watch the video and answer the questions during a live Nearpod lesson. If you do choose to have students watch the video on their own devices, please plan for headphones. Interactive videos can also now be added in Google Slides if you're using the Nearpod add-on to create your Nearpod presentation. If you have used Time to Climb in Nearpod, which is a great way to gamify a series of questions in Nearpod, uh, you'll be delighted to know that you can now use Time to Climb in student-paced Nearpods. So historically, you could only use Time to Climb synchronously with students during live Nearpod lessons. Now you can use Time to Climb asynchronously during student-paced lessons. We also now have the option to moderate student-paced collaboration boards. So this is a great way to make sure that all posts to a collaboration board are relevant and appropriate. Lastly, another great update that we can use to aid asynchronous instruction is audio submissions. As a part of open-ended questions, you can enable student audio recordings. So instead of typing their answers, students can speak their answers. Uh, this is a great option if you're only assessing content knowledge and not writing. It's a great option for ELL students to practice speaking. It is also something that within the next few months will become available for polls and quiz questions. Now, audio submissions for open-ended questions can be used in a synchronous environment, but You'll have lots of students talking potentially at the same time. So this feature is better suited to asynchronous instruction when you won't have all students recording their answers at the same time. If you do use this feature synchronously, just be sure to prepare for headphones with microphones. And thank you. If you have any questions about these updates, you can review this recording and access other resources on our Bite Size PD page. We also have lots of Nearpod how-to resources at canyonsdistrict.org slash canyonsu. And that way you can get to all of our educational technology resources. 
For relicensure credit, please visit the shortened URL on your screen. And to make any suggestions about these trainings, please visit the shortened URL at the bottom of your screen.